Corey Seitz has a question. Does God ever get angry with believers when we sin? If not, why did God get so angry with the Israelites when they sinned? Hmm. That's a really interesting question. So there are some who hold to a view of God where he never really gets angry with anybody because of a philosophical idea about his oneness um, so that God is never experiencing like emotions in that real sense the way that we do. Like, oh, I'm so angry. Not really like that. Um, I don't have that view. And so I'm going to answer this question different than, than those than the, the Thomists would. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just I, I just want to let you know there's more variety there, and and we're we're all still Christians here on the, both sides of this topic, but um, but I think that God did get angry. There's another group of people that would say God doesn't get angry for a completely different has nothing to do with philosophy. They'll say God didn't get angry because they're really thinking that that anger, ew, you know, like if God gets angry, ew, what's wrong with him? Like ew, God can't get angry, or or God got angry at me. Oh, like, why would he be angry? Poor little. God's never going to be angry at me. He's never angry at you. Don't worry. You're wonderful at all times. You are a beautiful and unique uh, butterfly, and 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 you you are perfectly one. God would never be angry at you. Not even if you murdered a billion people. Like he would never be mad at you. Like there there is this sort of pop Christian or or weird version of God that people do have, where it's like he could never be angry, but. The scripture seems pretty clear that however you understand this, God does get angry at sin. And so if he got angry at people in the Old Testament, are we going to suggest he doesn't get angry in the New Testament? Or we, he won't get angry because we're in, we're in Christ? Let me use an analogy of um, parenthood, and then I'll use an example from Jesus. So can a father get angry at their children? Rightly. Children who he loves, who are his his true children, who he's not disowning, but he's genuinely angry at them for the things that they're doing. That seems reasonable. So could, by analogy, God be mad at you? Hypothetically, be mad at you for what you're doing, even though he's not disowning you. But he's upset about it. That seems reasonable to me. I mean, unless you say that, that philosophically God just can't feel anger in any, any sense that makes sense to a human mind. Um, which I, I don't agree with personally. So that seems to make sense. Now let me use Jesus as an illustration. Jesus seems like he got irritated at people, even his disciples. Right? He calls. He's like, "Oh, you have little faith." He seems genuinely disappointed, disappointed in them at times. He's responding to them in real time. Now he's not disowning them, but there's like a genuine response, and I think that this is kind of healthy for us to think this. If you think that God has a permanent smile about everything you do, I think your view of God is a little distorted. It doesn't certainly fit the example of Jesus. When you read in Revelation, the letters to the churches, and Jesus is pretty seriously stern about with several of them, not all of them. Some of them, it's like, it's like he's got this, these, these like, um, these like wrinkles of, of, of concern about this church, you know, Smyrna or something. You know, and he's got such wonderful things to say about Philadelphia. And then, but Laodicea, he like threatens him. Like, he's like, this is going to happen. This bad stuff's going to happen to you if you don't repent. Like, it's not like he's smiling. This, you know, this bad stuff's going to happen to you if you don't repent, Laodicea. But I'm not mad at you. I would never be mad at you. I mean, I get the impulse to want to say that God can never be mad at us. But I think it's mistaken. I think it's like, um, uh, I, th I think it's wrong. So, that being said, God can have more than one feeling towards you at a time. I mean, he could he could see the sin you're committing and be upset about it, be in some sense mad or angry in a righteous and perfectly holy and right sense, but also feel compassion and pity towards you at the same time because God can have both of those feelings at the same time just like you can have them towards other people. Oh, I'm so mad you're doing that, but I'm like, my heart's breaking because I don't want to see you. It can... It can be more complicated than that. So I think God can do that as well. And I think that scripture seems to indicate this because Jesus, when he weeps over Jerusalem, he's a combination of compassion over the people and frustration with them as well. He's sorrowful over the sad and bad things that are happening, but he's also not holding back the fact that those things are right judgment up upon the people. Um, so 
that would be my, my understanding of that. I've tried to give several like you know off the cuff kind of scriptures and ideas that have, would support that. So you ask again, Corey. You said, "Does God ever get angry with believers when we sin?" Um, I think it's entirely possible, but it doesn't mean He disowns us. And if not, why did God get so angry with the Israelites when they sinned? And I would say, whenever they sin and God got angry at them, God is so holy and good that when you look in His face and you see anger, you know that He must be mad at something really bad, which means that the thing that they're doing must be really bad. That's a big deal. Anger is not a bad thing. It can be, and it often leads to bad things. But when God does it, it is entirely perfect and pure. I'm sorry if, for those who are watching who feel that you need God to be in constant approval of you, uh, I'll give you one word of caution. If you feel the need for God to continually approve, not just, not just forgive you, but approve of you, because you need God to forgive you, but you do not need him to approve of you. If you feel that need, God, you must constantly approve of me. You must constantly nod in agreement with the things I've done in my life. You must constantly tell me it's no big deal that I've done this and this and this, and that I just did what I needed to, that kind of thing. This will completely cripple your ability to let God be God in your life because God is just an approval device and he's not actually God. And that is, that is to say, that it might feel good for a season, but in the end, I'm creating a fake version of God. Like I look up at God, but then I hold up this smiling mask and I put it in front of his face so that every time I look, he's just smiling at me and that wouldn't be accurate. 